There are different screw patterns for different applications with corrugated sheeting products. In my case, I'm in a really high wind area, so I'm choosing to put a screw in every second corrugation. To avoid warping the layout, I put a screw in the center of the panel. You come and go like a monsoon rain. You had a show like a lightning bolt. You have it all. We're going to be replacing the iron with clear laser light so they can get more light into this side of the house. In our last episode, we successfully demolished the old awning and constructed a temporary scaffold to assist us in the building of the new one. I set the main beam in place and prepared the hardware on the posts that attach to the concrete foundation that holds our whole structure in place. I also completed the other principal pieces of framing that tie our awning into the existing house. In this episode, we'll be completing all the internal structural framing, starting with the rafters and then filling them out with blocks in between that creates the attachment points for the roof sheeting. I'll then custom cut our polycarbonate panels and install them in place with specialized roofing screws. To install our rafters, I'm checking with the drawing to make sure that the gap I've set between the rafters is gonna fit the frame that I've built so far and not run into the post in any kind of awkward way. My drawing is just a rough guide and often the real world structure varies from the initial drawing. So it's worth double checking with my tape measure before we make the final calculation of how we're gonna lay the rafters out. I now need to transpose the numbers on the paper to the timber frame we'll be installing them on. I write out the measurements as I mark the frame, as I'll have to repeat the marks on the outside of the frame as well. I make sure the end of my tape measure is anchored securely as I drag the tape measure across our structure to ensure a really accurate layout. Once all the rafter points are marked on the frame that's attached to the existing roof, I repeat the process on our main beam that our posts are attached to. My next step is to establish the angle of the roof slant by referencing the side frame that comes off the main house. I transfer this angle to my miter saw where I can actually see how many degrees it is. This will enable me to easily cut all the rafters at the right angle. With the first rafter fitting snugly, I fix it off with a single screw on the inside of our timber frame. It's always important to drill pilot holes first, but especially important when you're drilling in on an angle. I then add a single screw to the rafter through the outside of the frame and double check it hasn't twisted out of alignment with our pencil marks. Then drill out the other pilot holes and fix it in place. With the outside end of the rafter attached securely, we finish off the inside end by adding two more screws. Because these screws are fixed in on an angle, it's stronger to have two on one side and one on the other. The screw heads on this structure are going to be visible for the most part. So I've set up a pattern for the screws that I measure out with my set square. This way we'll have a visually consistent layout of all the fixings. Because the rafters are the key component of the internal framing of our structure, it's important that they're all exactly the same length. We want to keep the beam attached to the eave of the existing house and our outside main beam exactly parallel. I'm test fitting the third rafter I've cut to see if it'll fit tightly in the last two positions of our rafters. One of the reasons I kept the scaffolding in place through this process was to keep our outside main beam tight and parallel to the existing house. After confirming the third beam fits both final positions, I use it as a template and scribe it onto my raw material to cut the fourth rafter. I know the hours I shouldn't sit here and contemplate. 
completes the principal frame of our awning structure. We've still got to put the blocks along the inside. That's what the laser light or the polycarbonate roofing is going to attach to. This scaffolding is a big help working by myself because I was able to suspend some of these big beams. But now that we have these rafters in, it's all solid and attached. We don't need these anymore, so we're going to rip these down. Wish you How it's supposed to be Wish you stay The next step will be to put a pair of 2x4s all the way along in between these rafters. That's what the roof material is going to screw down onto. The row of blocks for the inside of our frame up against the existing roof have to be set far enough away from the guttering so I can install the roof screws through our sheeting without the guttering getting in the way. Using a scrap piece of timber cut to the right length and scribing it with my pencil is the quickest and most accurate way to get a mark on all six rafters. I measure and mark where the centre blocks will be fitted then cut a piece of scrap timber to match that mark and repeat the process I did for the inside frame. You could achieve the same result using a chalked string line, but due to the height of our structure, I find this easier and quicker. In theory, all the gaps between our rafters are identical in length. In practice, there'll be slight variations due to wood thickness and bends in the timber. So I measure all the rafter spaces to find the one that's the narrowest. I'll start with that one because I can push it back into plumb to match the other gaps. It turns out the two outside gaps are the narrowest, which makes sense. When I was installing the side frames, I made sure the natural bend in the wood was set on the inside. This way we can use the blocks to push them out to be exactly straight. It also makes it a lot easier to fit the blocks into a tight space. They don't move around as much or fall out when you're trying to drill them. But there's some words that I just want to hear you say To put it all straight before this night turns into day And then I'm on my way yeah. Yes, I'm on my way If a block doesn't feel tight enough to stay in place whilst I add the screws, I remove it, cut a slightly oversized block and add it into the gap next door. Now there'll be enough compression for this block to stay firmly in place whilst we add our screws. The first screw often wants to twist the block out of alignment with the pencil line. I use the clamp as an extra pair of hands to hold it in place. Once the block is fixed in place at one end, I remove the temporary block and fix the screws in the other end. I test out the strength of the block by suspending myself off the ground for a little bit. A roof structure like this should be able to hold a person easily. A bit naive and so eager to please. You know I played for love, but it got me on my knees. Now's the time to reap what I've sown. Your words echoing in every single bone. So far out at sea There's no 
It's been quite some time But you gotta let me know If I'm out of line I'm adding these brackets now As the last row of blocks along the eave of the house Would get in the way of the installation These steel brackets add a lot of strength to our joinery I'm installing them on both ends of each rafter Connecting to our main beams I hold them tight to where the frame joins and lock them in place with the built-in nail that's part of the bracket. Then hammer in the specialized galvanized nails all around the bracket. Awnings and veranda roofs can be very susceptible to the wind getting underneath them and causing damage. This property is right on the beach. A lot of powerful storms blow in from the ocean around here. So these brackets are gonna help hold the roof in place. I tell you what's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car with the steel brackets all in place, we can now install the last row of blocks. This is what the inside edge of our sheeting material is going to be attached to. I scribed and cut the piece of timber a couple of mil larger than the gap. This way I can achieve a really tight fit. I take my time hammering this block in place as it's a really close fit under the guttering. I install these blocks the same way we installed the previous blocks with the principle of having a really tight fit but not so tight that it pushes our frame out of plumb. Hey darling You know we're gonna have a really good time Darling in the middle of the night when the stars are bright and get in that car Leave a little road and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this here Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair I'm now ready to install the polycarbonate roof sheeting it comes in pieces over double the size we need. So I'm gonna start by cutting the sheets in half. My client's not sure how much overhang she wants on the awning. So by cutting them oversize and putting a piece in place, we can come up with a formula for what the final cut will be later. There's many different tools you could use for cutting polycarbonate. For this project, I'm gonna use a metal cutoff blade in my grinder as it's a really effective way of cutting multiple sheets at once. The end cut with the grinder will be hidden under the gutter and we'll use the factory edge to overhang the outside of the awning. After cutting the sheets in half, I put one in place and got my client to take a look and decide what kind of overhang she wanted. I then set up to trim them down to the final size they'll be. I use a straight edge to mark out the crowns of the corrugation with a black felt tip pen. To get a nice straight cut with the grinder, I plunge cut through the top of the corrugation. I only cut halfway across the sheet before switching sides so I don't have to lean too far to make the cut. Because of the flexible nature of the polycarbonate, I have to adjust my timber supports so the cutoff piece doesn't bind up with my grinder. 
One of the disadvantages of cutting polycarbonate with a metal cut-off disc in your grinder is the way it melts the edges. I fix this by letting it cool and pulling off the melted lumps with a pair of pliers. Once I've cleaned up the edge of the cut side, I stack all the sheets across the top of our awning frame. There's going to be slightly more polycarbonate than we need, so I want to see how much overhang I have and then I'll trim that with a pair of construction scissors. I don't use the grinder cutting system when I'm cutting a single sheet. It's easier and more manageable to use heavy construction scissors. I take my time to get a really straight cut because this will be exposed on one of the ends of our awning. I place the roof sheet back on our frame to check the fit and then go through adjusting all the sheets to make sure they're overlapping properly on their corrugations. With everything ready for the final stage of screwing the roof sheeting onto our frame, I take a coffee break and say hello to little Gus, who's been my helper throughout this project. in place, I start at one end, securing the outside edge flush to our frame. I'm laying out the screws in line with the blocks we added. We have three fixing points across the span of our awning. The idea is to secure it square and plumb on this outside edge and then lean over and fix it at the overlap of the next sheet. We come back later and put the fixings in between once the layout is all locked and even along the entire awning. Because of the soft and flexible nature of the polycarbonate, it's critical to lock in all the overlapping corrugation points first. That way our layout won't be warped or pulled out of alignment across the awning. When the whole layout is secured, I work my way back, filling out the screw fixings in between the corrugation overlaps. There are different screw patterns for different applications with corrugated sheeting products. In my case, I'm in a really high wind area, so I'm choosing to put a screw in every second corrugation. To avoid warping the layout, I don't fix the screws from one end to the other. I put a screw in the center of the panel and work my way back to the outside edges. This helps spread the tension that we're adding with our screws evenly across the sheet. I pre-drill all my holes as a way of ensuring that I get a really accurate fixing on the top of the crown of the corrugation. I use my fingers to guide the pilot hole into the center of the corrugation, drilling out a row at a time. Then I follow it up by adding the specialized roofing screws, paying careful attention to put the right amount of pressure on the screw so the little rubber cup forms a good seal on top of the polycarbonate. I go. It's important for me to continually reposition the ladder so I don't have to reach too far outside my center of gravity. You can notice that I'm using a towel to keep my tools and fixings on to avoid scratching our product. The installation of this last panel concludes the final step in our back door entry renovation. Let's take a look back at all the steps that got us to this point.
for joining me this week in my YouTube channel. Check the link below and while you're at it, hit the subscribe button or make a comment so I can help you with your future construction solutions. And don't forget to follow our channel for more ideas and how-to tips for home and garden projects.